We'll be starting today's video off by building a classic alcohol stove using the standard method and then I'm going to show you two tricks to make a far superior, far simpler stove with simple household items. The problem with this initial build is that it is made from two cans of the same circumference, which means it can be very difficult to get them to fit together. Some of the guides I found online say to make these little cuts around the edges of your inside can so that you can feather them in and slowly press them together, but this tends to consistently cause creases. I'm able to get these to fit fairly well so we can press on to the other components. The third component of this is an inner ring that we're going to make out of the excess can. All we need here is to cut a strip out of this and then make sure it's about the same height as the internal height of your stove. I'm using tin snips here, but you can also use a razor blade or a pair of scissors. I also recommend using gloves if you're not familiar with working with sharp metal. I was lucky enough to not cut myself during this build, but I have many times before and have grown cautious over the years. Now as I take this inner ring and get the diameter that I want, I'm going to pull it out and then provide a little bit of tape for support and then it pops back in and it gets held in by the recesses of the two portions of the can. Now I was told that that ring was necessary to help funnel the aerated alcohol up into the burner holes that we're about to cut into this, but I experiment later and find out that the ring really does nothing in our final build, so I'll be removing that later in the video. You can use a thumbtack or a drill bit to make the holes around the edges like I'm doing here, just try to make them evenly spaced for a nice even burn. Now I started this one up off camera and found that the fuel is just spewing out that split on the side. So let's try to figure out a better way to make this. I'm hoping that we can find two cans that have similar but not identical circumferences. So I'm trying out two competitors, Monster and Bang, for my first attempt. The idea is that be because the two companies are competitors that they would have slightly different manufacturing processes and generate slightly different size cans but as you can see here they're almost identical the monster can is just a tiny bit smaller so I was able to feather in the edges and almost get it to fit but it was too close for comfort so I'm going to be trying out a couple of different brands to see if we can have something a little more successful I found this A&W can in the recycling and decided to give it a shot. The thought process was that maybe a pop can or a soda can would be slightly smaller, slightly bigger than the energy drinks. And I had a little bit of success here as it fit inside the bang. And then I realized that it was developing the exact same issue as my initial stove. This definitely isn't going to work. So let's try a couple others. Sprite. I mark the line using a sharpie and a couple of wooden blocks, cut along the line, create myself a brand new top, but it does not fit. At this point, I'm starting to get frustrated. So now it's time to do the exact same thing and expect a different result. Mountain Dew. Surely one of these is going to be slightly different than the others, but I'm starting to suspect that there's some sort of industry standard that they all employ at their manufacturing locations. My issue is that my hope often outweighs my logic, so let's try this again. Red Bull. Surely this one won't match all the others, so I mark, cut, and try to assemble once again with the feathered monster can, but it's the exact same result. Digging into my neighbor's trash can, I was able to find this little Red Bull can. It looks delicious, but is far too small. I briefly consider taping up the edges with some electrical tape until the circumference was what I wanted, but we are too deep into this to compromise so severely. I ended up pacing through the pantry looking for other options when I came across this can of cream of mushroom soup, which felt just a hair smaller than the cans I've been working with all day. A quick test shows that it does fit real nicely on the bottom, so let's knock that label off, clean it up a bit, and see if we can get a better fit. I probably didn't need to use a utility knife to cut that paper label off, but I had it available and it was oddly satisfying. Another test fit shows that it's having some trouble, but I noticed that there's some rubber glue left from the label, so if I clean that up a little bit, let's see if we can get a, a tighter fit. I'm going to take the opportunity to uh, pop this open, clean it out, and see if we can make something out of it. I like the idea of using a soup can because it's far stronger and more durable than these aluminum can stoves that I've been making for the last couple of years. 
This is my least favorite part of the build. Cream of mushroom soup has always nauseated me, whether it's cooked, clean, diluted, or raw. So let's wash that up off screen and get this can ready to go. I remove the glue, cut it down, and do a test fit, and it's amazing. I couldn't ask for a cleaner, tighter fit, and it's exciting because of the durability of that can. Now, it should be noted that these alcohol stoves burn off the gaseous form of alcohol, so you actually have to light it on fire and let it heat up until it starts boiling itself, which doesn't take too long, but in colder environments, it can take a long time for these things to work. I poke the holes all around the sides, and then I remove the inside off camera with a Dremel, but you can also use a razor blade or scissors to open it up. Here I'm showing them using a little bit of ISO heat, I tried the baffle one more time and it didn't work out for me, so I ended up removing that baffle entirely as you'll see on the final build. I light this up and it lights beautifully. You can use a match, I just had the blowtorch available, uh, but the flames were too high without a center cover. So before my camera melts, I'm going to pull this to the side, put it out, clean my stuff up and create a cover. This is it burning with the cover on and I'll show you what that looks like here. On the bottom of the screen, you see that burnt circle. That is another piece of a pop can that I use to cover the center hole once this reaches temperature. So let's put this back together, add some fuel, and do a real burn and a test on this egg. I'm using a red bottle of ISO heat for the fuel, but if you used a yellow bottle, it produces a cleaner blue flame. It just doesn't show up really well on camera, so I'll be using the red today. We're gonna light this up and let it heat up like I was talking about. And while we do that, I'm gonna pound three nails in to hold up the cast iron. You don't want to try to crush the stove with your pan because one, it's a small circle and your food can easily spill off of it. Two, it tends to put the flames out. It's not very efficient when you have the pan directly on the stove. And three, you can easily poke three sticks into the ground or use three rocks in order to create a stable platform for your cooking service. This one was a little bit off. I had to pound two of the nails in a little bit more to get it down over top of the stove. And then we let it heat up for a little bit more before adding on that center cap. That center cap allows the burner to engage. You can see them all coming out the little holes in the side. It's absolutely beautiful. So let's get to cooking that egg. Now the trick with cast iron is to let it heat up before you start cooking. You can't just throw food in a cold pan or you will be scrubbing it off the bottom later. Today I'm just seeing what kind of temperatures we're dealing with and this seems to be cooking around a medium on the stove top. I could adjust the heat a little bit by raising and lowering the pan, but you're really kind of stuck with what you got. So there you have it. Using a soup can makes these stoves 10 times easier to build and 10 times more durable on the trail. If you enjoyed today's tips, hit subscribe for more. And if you want this to go out to more people, like and comment below. It tells YouTube that it's appreciated and it lets more people enjoy this content. Thank you for watching and take care.